Hello, welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about the interesting relationship between interest rates, so the interest rate, and bond prices. So interest rates and bond prices. Now, these two things are negatively correlated. Okay, so when we look at the relationship between these two things, we can say they have a negative correlation. And if you remember what that means, a negative correlation tells us that when one of them is increasing, the other is decreasing. And when the other is increasing, uh, when other, the other is uh, increasing, the other first one's decreasing. Now, now that I confuse myself, let me write it so it's a little easier to process. And I'll show it in two ways. So in the first scenario, let's say interest rates increase then bond prices decrease. However, if interest rates decrease, then bond prices increase. So if and then, right? If the interest goes up, the bond prices go down. If the interest goes down, then the bond prices go up. And what I want to do in this video is convince you that this actually makes perfect sense, right? And in a graph, we can say, Okay, let's say our x-axis is our bond price, and then on the y-axis is our interest. You would get something like this. And that's just showing you, let's say, a really high bond price that might correspond to a really low interest rate. Right? So as the bond prices get higher and higher and higher, the interest rates get lower and lower and lower. And conversely, over here, let's say something here, a lower bond price might correspond to a higher interest rate. And this has to do with the change in interest rate and how it impacts bonds. Why would it work this way? Well, there are all types of situations in which we can think about this, but I, I kind of want to explain it from a personal finance perspective. So think about the way bonds work. What happens? You buy a bond for some amount. All right, you buy it. And then for most bonds, as time passes, Right? What happens? Well, as time passes, you get paid, right? You get money, you get those coupons, those payments. And this is how most bonds work. Then at the end of its life, what happens? You get the bond back. Right? You get it back. So for example, if you buy a ten thousand dollar bond and you get six percent return each year you're going to get $600 per year, let's say for 10 years, and then at the end of the 10 years, you get that bond back. That's, that's true for most, that's how most of them work. So, so if that's the case, let's think about this scenario. Let's say somewhere in here, in those 10 years that you own the bond, you decide you want to sell the bond. You, you want to trade it, you want to sell or trade it, right? You want to sell or trade your bond. What happens, right? What's going to happen if you want to do that? I don't think I need a question mark there, but so if you want to, if you want to do that, that's where this relationship. This is one of the ways in which it becomes important. Now, you there are a lot of reasons you might want to sell your bond. Maybe you need the income. Maybe uh, you want to invest the money somewhere else. There are lots of reasons. But let's assume you want to sell it before you get it back. How much will you sell it for? And that's where this relationship between interest and bond prices really comes out nicely. So let's just look at the example I've been saying. You, you paid, you, you paid $10,000 and you get 6% interest for 10 years. For 10 years. So that means you get $600 return, 6% 6 of 10,000 per year. That's your payment. So now you want to sell it at some point in, in the time here. We're not going to get into the details of uh, when in the life, you're, of the, the life of the bond you're selling it, but you want to sell it. So let's look at the first scenario. So scenario one. Scenario one, the interest rates is increasing on other bonds. And let's just give it maybe a not realistic number, but let's just say the interest is increasing on other bonds to 
So you got it at 6%, now it's at 10%. What does that mean? Well, that means if you wanna sell your bond, you have to lower the price. Why, right? Well, I did say if interest rates go up, then the value of the bond goes down or the price you could sell it for, but that's not really explaining anything. It's just saying a fact. The idea is that now that higher interest rates are available, 10% is available, let's think about it from this perspective, no one wants your, your lousy 6%, no one wants it. Why would, why, why would I spend $10,000 on a bond that only gives me 6% back when I can spend $10,000 on a bond that gives me 10%, right? Who's gonna want this? Because that means, right, if, for example, if, if you're getting 10%, this means um, they get, whoever they is, they get 0.1, 10%, times $10,000 on a $10,000 bond per year. That's, they get $1,000 per year. That's way bigger than, than your $600 per year, right? So why would they take 600 when they can get 1,000? So in order to make your bond, um, I think, desirable, you have to lower the price. How much do you have to lower it by? Well, you have to lower it enough so that this $600 that they're getting is like getting 10% of what they paid for in the bond because they're gonna get 10% of any bond that they're investing in. So if they're only getting $600 from your bond, we should ask the question, and here's the algebra, 10% of what bond amount would give you the $600 that your bond pays out? And that's, that's how you can figure it out, right? This is saying 10% of what bond amount is $600, because that's what they would get on the market. They would get 10% of whatever bond that they buy, and you're only able to offer them $600 per year in payout. So if we solve for x, it means we divide both sides by 0.1. We get kind of a crazy realization here that's six thousand dollars. You have to sell your you have to get to sell your bond uh, at six thousand dollars, and they would be buying it at a discount. So that's scenario one, where they they literally are able to buy your bond. They whoever you're selling it to, they buy it at a discount, right? They're literally getting a discount on that bond. And that's really great for them. They only spent $6,000 to get this bond and you know they're getting their 10%, but then at the end of the, the life of the bond, they get the face value of it, which is $10,000. So they're doing really well. They saved $4,000 in the purchase and they're gonna make another $4,000 when they uh, claim the face value of the bond. That's the bond's value at the end of its life which for many bonds matches what you paid for it. So if you paid 10,000, you're gonna get 10,000 back. And that's scenario one. Scenario two is, is the reverse, scenario two. And this is, you're trying to sell your bond, right? You wanna, for whatever reason, you wanna get rid of it. And you notice, oh my gosh, the interest rates are decreasing. Now, we said before, over here, if the interest goes down and the bond price goes up, so that's what should happen here. And in scenario one, the interest went up, so your bond, your bond price, the value of your bond went down. Now when the interest goes down, your bond, you can sell it for more. So let's just go, we went four percentage points up, let's go in the other direction. Um, other bonds, let's say now, other bonds give 2%. That's way less. So, so, that's, so if they bought a $10,000 bond, right? If they bought a $10,000 bond in this market, they would only get a 2% return. And that's, and that's not that much, right? 10% uh, is 1,000, 5% is 500, so 2% is $200. So they would only be getting $200 per month in this market. But your bond gives $600. So the question is 2% of what bond amount, in other words, how much, how large would the bond have to be so that 2% of it gives you $600. Because they would be making $600 a year off of your bond. And in this current market, they would only be getting 2% on whatever they buy. So 2% of one, what bond amount would give them 600? You divide both sides by 0.02. And you might be surprised at how much more you should be able to sell this, your bond for. All right, 600 divided by 0.02 is $30,000, right? 
$30,000. So um, it doesn't guarantee, of course, like, this is just a basis for understanding what's going on here. But this is a good way to approximate that your bond value will go way up because they would have to spend $30,000 in the bond market to get that $600. So you can certainly sell yours for more. Will you sell for exactly $30,000? Well, it depends on a lot of factors, but you can definitely sell it for more. And you, as the seller, know they would have to spend $30,000 in the current market to get $600. So you can certainly sell it for close to that value. That's the idea. And and in general, you know, we can sum this up. There are phrases that we use to describe this process. And in this one, let me go back. This is, we say this is buying at a premium. Premium. So, you know, you're selling, at a, you're selling it at a premium. They're buying it at a premium. You're selling it essentially for more than you paid for it. So there are essentially two situations. Um, we have discounts. Right? You, buy, you buy a bond for cheaper or sell it for cheaper than you bought it. And that happens when the interest is going up. So, for example, you could say, you know, my margins were huge, the, the interest rates, but it might be much closer. So, for example, you might say, I bought a bond, I bought it at a discount at 96. So, in our case, what would that mean? Well, at 96 for the... For the $10,000 bond, that would be 96% of 10,000. 96% of 10,000. 96, so 0.96 times 10,000. And of course, it matters uh, how much the bond is, but 96 is the percentage. And that means you paid 9,600. And in that case, if this happened, what would that mean? Well, you're getting $600 per month, and you only had to pay $9,600. You paid less than the $10,000. These are for, we'll assume, $10,000 bonds. And that means your rate of return would be $600 divided by $9,600. Right, so you just you want to evaluate this. Just I'm, <laughs> I'm plugging on my calculator right now instead of on the screen. Um, sorry. So this is a 6.25% return. And that makes sense because you, they're getting more interest rate, a higher interest rate than you were. You were getting 6%, but you had to pay 10000 They're getting the same amount of money, but they paid less, so they have a higher interest rate. And then there's a premium, which means you would pay more for the bond uh, than it was originally sold for. And again, the reason is because you, any other bond around has a lower interest rate anyway, so you have to pay more for it. So this happens when the other interest rates of bonds decrease. And again, this is for a $10,000 bond. Let's assume that. You might say, well, yeah, I bought this bond at 104. I bought it at a premium. It's over 100. Over 100 is a premium. So let's say you buy at 104. That's 104%. That's 1.04 times 10,000. And that's 10,400. I'll put a dollar sign up here that bothers me, actually. Dollar. Okay, so this is 10,400. And this means, you know, the interest rates have gone down. And in our, your case, in this situation, the person was still beginning getting $600 per year, but they had to pay more than you did to get it. So what would their interest rate be? It would be 600 divided by 10,400. It's a lower interest rate than you were getting. Right? The, more in, the higher the interest rate, the higher the return or percentage based on your investment. So in this case, you can see there's a fluctuation we started at, for $10,000, that's where we started at 6%. And you can see that these little fluctuations, a quarter of a percentage, would have a $400 impact on a $10,000 loan. Whereas if it went, interest rates are going down by 0.2%, you can sell your, your bond for $400 above its value. So, and that's a, you know, that's a, a less of a decrease than an increase, but it's the same monetary difference in a different perspective because of the way percentages work. If the bond price is only dropped by 0.2%, you would be able to sell your bond for $10,400, let us say. But if it went up by 0.25%, um, you would lose money, but um, you, you, it takes more of a percentage to lose $400, in other words, because the numbers are going down, and an increase, of course, is based on a higher number, the percentage here. And that's the way percentages work in general. I don't know if I'm rambling there, if it's helping. But anyway, there's a discount 
and a premium. And it happens when the interest rates fluctuate. All right, I hope this helped.